My name is Minji Kim. I'm a historian and lecturer specializing in dress, fashion, and textile history of Korea, and currently a research associate at Tracing Patterns Foundation based in Berkeley, California in the United States. Thank you so much for having me for this Yeo lecture series. This is my second time for Yeo audience. My first talk was back in 2019 with a title, Manifestation of Collective Identity, Traditional Korean Dress Hanbok. I'm very delighted to revisit with today's topic, which is Korean fashion exhibitions in the global venues. Today's presentation has two parts. First, as a background knowledge, I will talk about the rise of fashion exhibitions in museums across the globe, and then review the seven exhibitions that featured Korean fashion and dress in Europe and in the United States from 2013 to 2022. Discussing the approaches and themes and featured objects and what each exhibition left us to delve into more in the context of dress and fashion history of Korea. When I grew up in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, museums were not that attractive places. It was boring to go to a museum. But for the past three decades, many more museums were built and diversified with specialized collections. With technological advancement, museum practices have also evolved in preservation, research, and display of objects, public education, and cultural experience, which can enrich the quality of their visitors' lives. Within the context of museum's transformation into a popular and important site to serve and engage with community members, I would like to bring up the phenomenon that fashion has become an indi indispensable subject of display in museums with unprecedented ardor. Now, museums are crazy for holding fashion exhibitions because Museums recognize that presentation of fashion in museums may bring in visitors with breaking records, media attention, and sponsors. Most of all, fashion exhibitions appeal to young generation audiences. Fashion exhibition not only serves as a means of expressing culture and individual creativity, but also stimulates conversations on underlying critical issues in our society, such as diversity and inclusion, and race and gender identity through the lens of fashion. Items of dress are the material culture associated with fashion the most. They express so much about the individuals who wore them and the cultures and times in which they lived. Countless valuable contexts, history, art, technology, psychology, culture, social systems, customs, all are reflected in what people wear. And the management of objects of clothing, textiles, and bodily adornment in museums developed from ethnological and anthropological placement to today's fashion museology context that considers fashion as a form of art with spectacular visual effect and experiential analysis conveying critical and reflective narratives of history. This transition in museum practices is framed as from dress museology to fashion museology, the foci of which are shifting toward image-driven front stage works and architectural installations. With this background knowledge about the transition of museum practices revolving around dress and textile collections, let me move on to the second part of this talk, which is a review of the seven exhibitions that featured Korean dress and fashion. 
The first exhibition I'm touching on is Looking East, Rubens' Encounter with Asia, held at the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles in 2013. The main object that deployed the exhibition was an intriguing drawing of a man, this man titled Man in Korean Costume by Peter Paul Rubens, dated approximately to 1617. This man's foreign appearance, especially, quote, the cascade of the shimmering folds of the robe and transparent hat, unquote, was associated with Korean costume since 1934. And also, many scholars of Korean dress invariably identified them as Cholli, coat, tapo, short-sleeved coat, and bangon, square-shaped transparent hat. To support the fascinating exploration of the mystery surrounding Rubens' encounter with the man, the clothing artifacts comparable to the depicted headdress and robes were brought over from the National Folk Museum of Korea. However, Korean dress historian Kim Young Jae's research, which was published in the exhibition catalog, suggests that, quote, Rubens fashioned the exotic ensemble with his own interpretation, noticeably different from the characteristics examined from the surviving artifacts. So, Take a look at the depiction of the top knot and head, headwear far from realism compared to that in the portrait of Yi Guangsa and the surviving Bangon. Also, take a look at the comparison of the proportion between the width of neckband and width of shoulder. After all, the exhibition left the man's identity still open for research. Three years later, two Dutch scholars published a paper arguing the man's identity as Chinese merchant Yi Bong. The man in Korean costume was actually a preparatory sketch for this figure wearing a yellow robe here. In Rubens' other work titled The Miracles of St. Francis Javier, the authors discovered this portrait in the middle from album Amicorum of Nicolas de Vry, which had an inscription identifying the sitter as the Chinese merchant Yi Bong, the first Chinese to visit Europe on a ship of the Dutch East India Company. Yi Bong's appearance and clothing show great similarity to those of the men in Korean costume. Therefore, the authors persuasively argues that the man in Korean costume should be renamed Portrait of the Chinese Merchant Yi Bong. The Looking East was not a fashion exhibition. The items of clothing brought over from Korea were supplementary to enhance the audience's understanding of the major artwork of the exhibition, which is man in Korean costume. The style of clothing items ways of wearing them and ways of grooming the hair and headwear were central to associate the figure with Korea. In that association, however, I find a missed point to consider. It is a broad geographical scope in which Bangon, Cholli, and Dapo were worn. Bangon is one of the Confucian scholars' hats casually worn at home originally in the Ming Dynasty China, but also became popular in Joseon. Cholli and Dapo originated from Mongol and were transmitted to Korea during the period of Mongols' political intervention of Goryeo from the mid-13th century. The two items, Cholli and Dapo, were popularly worn as part of military dress until late Joseon. So all the three items were actually of foreign origins, but transmitted to Korea and culturally authenticated. If I borrowed the expression from cultural authentication theory by Joanne B. Eicher and Tony Vieira Cosima on that even 
an imported item of dress can be a significant component of an ethnic ensemble that visually represents ethnic identity. If the item has gone through the processes of cultural authentication, from simple selection to characterization to incorporation and to transformation. Because Mongol had a great impact on vast areas, Cholik and Dapo were widely worn across Eurasia. Now you are seeing the Cholik worn in India in the painting from the collection of the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. On the right is an artifact of Goryeo. Then why were the items of dress associated with Korea in the first place rather than other countries? And how do we define Korean dress for many items which did not originate but popularly worn in Korea? If they can be considered as Korean dress, how should we interpret today's yangbok? Should we consider yangbok as Korean dress as well? So these are the questions the Looking East exhibition left me to delve into more. Now, moving on to the next exhibition. The second exhibition is Treasures from Korea, Arts and Culture of the Joseon Dynasty, 1392 to 1910, which was held in the Philadelphia Museum of Art first, then traveled to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and then the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. The show was organized around five key themes, the king and his court, Joseon society, ancestral rights, Buddhism in a Confucian society, Joseon in modern times. And this exhibition explored the roles of kings and court, the distinct spheres of men and women in society and religious beliefs, all underpinned by the ideals of Confucianism and the substantial legacy of which still influences contemporary etiquette, cultural norms, and societal attitudes in modern Korea. The showcased Joseon's masterworks include 19th century Wonsam, court ladies' ceremonial robe, and Dalyeong, officials' court robe, which were brought over from the collection of Seoul Museum of History, where I am at this moment. Also, the late 19th century exquisite jokduri, women's headwear and head hair ornaments, and norige, women's ornamental pendant, were brought from Sukmyeong Women's University Museum. And the 18th century rami dopo, the 19th century military dress, consisted of dongdari and jeonbok, and the early 20th century dangi, Court ladies' semi-formal jacket were brought from Danguk University Sokjuseon Memorial Museum. Again, this is not a fashion exhibition. The items of dress displayed in this exhibition offered a cultural lens through which diverse contexts of Joseon society could be illuminated. The next exhibition I'm talking about is going to be a finally fashion exhibition. Korea Now, Craft, Design, Fashion, and Graphic Design in Korea, held at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris from September 2015 to January 2016. As part of commemorating the 130th anniversary of diplomatic ties between France and South Korea. This exhibition was curated by the team of Hanbok Advancement Center, a South Korean government institution established to promote cultural value of Hanbok under the auspices of Korea Craft and Design Foundation in 2014. With more than 270 works of traditional and contemporary fashion, this exhibition marked the largest scale and the longest duration of Korean fashion exhibition outside of Korea at that time. The major theme was obangsek, or five directional colors, a traditional color symbolism that each of five directions 
signifies a corresponding color that is east, blue, west, white, south, red, north, black, and center, yellow. Each direction is also designated with a corresponding element. East, tree, west, gold, south, fire, north, water, and center, earth. People believed that five elements, the five elements constituted the universe they live in, and that dominated multiple aspects of pre-modern Korean culture. If you see Cho Yong dance performance at a royal feast of 1719, the performers are wearing a costume conforming to the five directional colors. So here, east, blue, west, white, south, red, north, black, and center, yellow. This notion also dictated clothing design, especially children's clothing. Parents wished their children would have a well-rounded life, so each panel of the children's coat was given with the respective five colors. The bodice, green, side gadget, red, and center panel, yellow, and sleeves are rendered sektong, multiple colored stripes. The five colored coat, called obangjang durumagi, and sektong sleeves, embody the people's wish to equip with all five traits in a balanced way. However, this original meaning is no longer relevant to today's fashion design practice. The curatorial team further explored symbolic meanings of the colors in Korean cultural contexts and organized the artworks based on the augmented color symbolism. Here are the installation shots. Red, showing diverse styles of Korean skirts since the 5th century. Red, shamanism-inspired looks by Yi Sangbong. Black, Reign of Peace, Taepyeong Songdae by Kim Hesun. So these two works are by Kim Hesun, and the bottom three works are by Seol Yun Hyung. Blue, the spirit of the sunbi for Joseon garment replicas by the designers from Arumjigi Culture Keepers Foundation. Blue, contemporary men's fashion by Jung Uk Jun from Jun Ji, uh, Jun Jae, in collaboration with Arumjigi designers. Yellow, wealth and prosperity and the president's handbook by Kim Young Seok. White, purity, brightness, and holiness by Yi Young Hee. So the three works are by Yi Young Hee, and the rest are by Yi Hae Sun. White by Jin Tae Another group of works of white by Jin Tae The curatorial direction was focused on showcasing the Koreanness visually and symbolically expressed in the traditional and contemporary Korean fashion. This work is install, installed by uh, creative director So Young Hee. And I'll show you more works by Kim Young Seok. This is Hwarot by Kim Young Seok. And this is Yellow Wonsam by Kim Young Seok. And this installation shot features works by the late Andre Kim in the theme of yellow. So, what's the significance of this exhibition? The, the selected artworks featured for this exhibition were re-featured in the later Korean fashion exhibitions held in the United States, such as Couture Korea and Korean fashion from Royal Court to Runway. I'll show you uh, this. Joseon garments replicas are re-featured at the Couture Korea exhibition in Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. And this work by Jin tae uh, called Mindo Dress was re-featured at the Asian Art Museum's exhibition, Couture Korea. 
And this work by Jin Teo was also re-featured at the Asian Art Museum's exhibition, Kutril Korea. And this Hwarot dress by Yi Young Hee was re-featured at the uh, Korean fashion from Royal Court to Runway exhibition held at the uh, George Washington University and George Washington University Museum and the Textile Museum. And this Dancheng inspired look were refeatured at the George Washington University's uh, exhibition, Korean fashion from Royal Court to Runway. Okay, let me move on to the next exhibition. The next exhibition is Couture Korea, held at the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco. In November 2017 through February 2018, which marked the first major Korean fashion exhibition held in the United States. This exhibition was co-curated by Arumjigi Culture Keepers Foundation in South Korea and Hyunjung Kim Han, the curator for Korean art in the Asian Art Museum at that time, who now is relocated to Denver Art Museum. Couture Korea explored the past and present of Korean fashion as a form of artistic expression, bringing over more than 120 works from Seoul and Paris. This exhibition presented three themes. The first theme, what is hanbok? You see at the corner here. What is hanbok? explored the history, tradition, and social propriety of hanbok through the various items worn by Joseon elite class called yangban. All the items displayed in this gallery were handmade replicas by Arumjigi Culture Keepers Foundation designers seeking historical accuracy from the weaving of the fabric. The second theme between East and West in Hembret Gallery presented the artworks of two senior designers, Jin Tae Ok and the late Karl Lagerfeld from Chanel as modern reinterpretation of Korean tradition. The third theme presented in Lee Gallery from Seoul to San Francisco demonstrated two South Korean emerging designers creative process to connect Korean tradition with modernity. This work, this work in the middle is by Im Son Ok and the right one is by Jung Mi Son. So the main message throughout the exhibition was the still valuable tradition that informs contemporary Korean and global fashion. This was a pioneering introduction on what is hanbok and Korean fashion with compelling installation to those not familiar with Korean dress and fashion and with little resource in English. But Korea Now and Couture Korea exhibitions left to the field of study some foundational interpretative works to be resolved for future Korean fashion exhibition, that is, how to reinterpret dress and fashion history of Korea and find narratives and objects to be engaged with the larger themes of global fashion exhibition, that critically considers society and environment of our future with universal value, such as sustainability, transparency, social justice, diversity and inclusivity. Let's move on to the next exhibition. Korea, a land of hats, was, so, was co-organized by the Charles B. Wang Center at Stony Brook University in New York and the Koreana Cosmetics Museum in Seoul. The invitees to the opening are advised to attend in their favorite hat. So this is a cut showing the fun moment. This exhibition showcased diverse hats of Korea, such as cut, this is cut, um, such as cut for gentlemen's outing. For indoors, 
Mangon and Bangon. Mangon is a headband. Bangon is a square shaped transparent head as we ex examined uh, before. And these two are tri tiered Zhongzhaguan. And the last one is Tangon. And this first one in the left is Yugon worn by Confucian scholars. The next is Galmo, made with oiled paper to protect a wearer from rain. Hogan, boy's head, shaped in a form of tiger's head to empower a, a wearer with tiger's braveness. And the last one is called Huihang, worn in cold winter. Okay, the next exhibition is Gold Needles, Embroidery Arts from Korea. This exhibition was held at the Cleveland Museum of Art in March through October 2020. The exhibition was co-organized with the, with the Seoul Museum of Craft Art and brought over selected artifacts from Ho Dong-hwa and Park Young-suk collection. The couple dedicated their lives to collecting more than 5,000 pieces of Korean embroidery and patchwork textiles and exhibiting them with publications internationally for over a half century. Mr. Ho passed away in 2018. Right before his death, he donated his collection to the Seoul Museum of Craft Art. The Cleveland Museum of Art was the venue of which he had always dreamed to hold an exhibition. So this exhibition finally got to honor his lifelong dedication to Korean textiles. It was only unfortunate that in-person visit was struck by the lockdown due to the outbreak of COVID. Through the lens of exquisite embroidery works, folding screens, hyungbae, rank badge, and traditional dress items like Harod here. This exhibition offered an expansive view of the unique identities and cultural ideals that anonymous Joseon women established through their crafts in the highly patriarchal Joseon society. In addition to that, this exhibition also introduced diverse aspects of Joseon people's lives that transcended the conventional notion embedded in patriarchy. For example, it brought to light the female Confucian scholar Im Yun Ji Dang's scholarship and her own connection debunking her male colleagues' misogynistic interpretation of Confucian teachings. On the other hand, this exhibition illuminated Yi Bing Ho Gak's publication Encyclopedia of Women's Daily Life, Kyuhap Chongseo, and the aesthetic of male embroiders' works of late Joseon, which were created in Anju, today's South Pyongan province, and distributed statewide to gentry families at that time. Okay, now we are moving on to the final exhibition, which is Korean fashion from Royal Court to Runway, held at the George Washington University Museum and the Textile Museum, which opened in August and still on view now. This exhibition is curated by Lee Talbot, perhaps the only curator holding specialty in Korean textiles and clothing in the United States. The exhibition's introduction begins with addressing growing global attention to things Korean, the Korean wave, Hallyu, as the rationale of this exploration of Korean fashion that has reflected the country's extraordinary transformation in socio-cultural and economic contexts. The exhibition space takes up the galleries in the second floor and the third floor. The second floor gallery comprehensively demonstrates items of traditional Korean clothing, hanbok, as an ever-evolving form of fashion from the last quarter of the 19th century to, to this day. The featured objects are significantly from the collection of Field Museum in Chicago and Dr. Yang Chung's private collection. 
The third floor gallery illuminates the trajectory of modern Korean fashion from their incipient Yangjang fashion to today's Shinhanbok and street fashion as well as historical drama costumes, all of which gradually gained recognition by global audience. For textiles, a royal mattress, Boryo, embellished with imperial and auspicious symbols, commoners' patchwork cloth, Jogakbo, and folding screen embroidered with a pine tree and cranes, Songhak Jasu Byungpung by Dr. Yang Yang Chung are showcased. It runs four slideshow screens, one in the second floor with early photographic works featuring Koreans in traditional clothing around the turn of the 20th century, three in the first floor, the first one with fashion pho photography from uh, 1950s, and the street fashion scenes in the 2020s by hip hopper and K-pop and modernized Hanbok fashion uh, on the right screen uh, of the historical drama costumes. As the most recent exhibition on Korean fashion held outside of Korea, Korean fashion from royal court to runway provides a comprehensive and illustrative storytelling of Korean fashion history. The in-depth, long-time research critically conceptualized the topic and themes and exhumed a great deal of hidden primary sources and little-known collections that hold great significance in historiography of Korean fashion in a global context. To conclude, the set seven exhibitions that presented Korean dress and fashion across Europe and America for the past decade, which are Looking East, Treasures of Korea, Korea Now, Couture Korea, Korea A Land of Hats, Gold Needles, and Korean fashion from Royal Court to Runway. So these seven exhibitions are responses of the museums to the growing interest in Korean fashion. The unique trajectory of Korean fashion is worth receiving global attention to reflect on, as it speaks of the country and the people who made the extraordinary journey toward one of the global fashion capitals without losing their local identity. My talk today to the audience in Korea, on the one hand, aimed to highlight the exhibition's achievements in promoting knowledge of Korean dress and fashion, and honor all the hard work done by the curatorial teams in the global arena. On the other hand, however, the assertion of the growing visibility of Korean fashion exhibitions did not mean just to uplift national cultural pride. For the past century, Korean fashion did make a great progress from a side of ever influenced to that of influential. Yet, there is great room for improvement in laying the groundwork in order for Korean fashion to lead today's global fashion. First of all, there is no fashion museum in Korea, no special education or training system to foster fashion historian or fashion curator in a global standard. There's lack of academic as well as public attention to the power of fashion exhibition as a crucial and fascinating cultural tool that can create enormous economic and educational value. Fashion exhibition can serve as a useful means to stimulate cultural tourism and public education through critical thinking. Fashion not only makes us reflect on our past, but also help shape our present and future through the daily practice. I hope my talk today could inspire the audience to recognize the power of fashion exhibition to engage with public and 
build a system to make this field grow. Thank you so much.